Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project, episode 204. My name is Glenn Gers, and I come to you every Monday through Friday, if I can make it, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Zone to let you look over my shoulder, share my screen as I write a script. I do this in order to demystify the process of writing a script. I think there's a lot of great writing teachers out there who tell you how to write a great script, to tell you how to write the script that will sell, but they don't talk too much about the actual work it takes, the type of work, and the experience of the work to actually get all your thoughts and ideas into an outline, into a rough draft, into a polished script. That process is, I think, pretty much the same no matter what kind of script you're writing. You need to learn to get comfortable with the process of getting your words down on paper, organizing them, turning them into a rough and then into a polished script. It's not the only way to do it. It's just the way that I figured out in my 25-year career writing for TV and movies. So I thought I, maybe it will be helpful to you if you see somebody do it. It's kind of like if you want to learn to cook, watching someone cook, you pick up little techniques and tricks and things that they do which because they've done it a thousand times and they are comfortable doing it. So if you can learn by watching that's what this is for. It is not the be-all, end-all, this is your education. It's just a way to learn something about the tools, the tricks, the techniques of getting things into that weird format we call a script. If you want to know more about what I think a great script is and what kind of uh, work it takes to make a script great, this channel is full of lessons, little 10-minute videos. The first three sections, especially, of my channel have uh, the screenwriting essentials, screenwriting tool skills and craft, and the process, being a writer. Each one of those videos, there's a nice big name on the thumbnail so that you know what it's about. Try them out. See what uh, it uh, can give you in terms of skills, tools, process, techniques, because I think every writer has to figure out their own way. There's not a single right way to do it, so I'm just going to show you what I know are useful pieces of the work, and you can put it together the way you want. Make it work for you. Every writer has to do that. If something doesn't work for you, don't do it. Uh, likewise, you don't have to watch all 204 of these. It's just something to check out if you want to get a sense of the experience of writing, and you feel, am I doing this right? I'm not saying I'm doing it right, but I'm saying at least I did it. <laughs> so, hello, Natasha. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Donna. Hello, Maria. You made it to another, uh, another one of these live streams. Even though you are at work, I am impressed. The whole process has been invaluable to me, and I have learned so much. That I really, that's the thing. Develop, you develop certain things that you take and adapt in your own way. That is the name of the game, Maria. Gold Star. <laughs> Hi, Gene. Good to see you. Okay, so um, we are at the kind of uh, drudgy part of, of writing this script in some ways because we're just going through it again and again. But that is, unfortunately, how you write. You go over it again and again and again. You go over it and over it. And every time you go over it, you get a different part of it. it snags your eye. You go, oh, wait, I, I think I see how to make that better. You don't get the whole thing at once. Nobody gets it all at once. And nobody gets it the first time. You go over it and over it and over it. Hello, El Aret. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to go over today, which is... Um, we're going to start again at the beginning, do what they call another pass. Um, so this is just me yelling at myself, lecturing myself, saying, hey, stop doing this. Um, this is just me. Uh, I often will put a little 
lectures to myself, notes to myself, going, "Hey, hey, get there, get your act together." Um, so one of the things that I think is important here is I realized reading through it that I just need to make it, I need to be what I would consider less good writing, which is less, I like things to be very nonchalant and casual and develop sort of slowly and sneakily in the subtext. And with uh, something that's as plotty as this, um, with as many uh, elements and characters, I actually feel like I'm just not being on the nose enough. Um, so we're going to go through the script. Uh, again from the beginning, and uh, thank you. I like what you're writing. Looks like the show only murders in the building. Yes, um, it has some uh, similarities. It's it's in the same genre, that sort of comedy mystery thriller. Um, I, I think that um, that theirs. I mean, I, I hope mine is a little grungier. <laughs> theirs is very. Uh, pretty and sweet, and I want mine to be a little uh, rougher um, in tone. Um, that is my goal. Um, but yes, absolutely. Only murders in the building um, is uh, there. There is a podcast element. It's it's about podca a podcaster. Uh, so there is stuff in common. Okay, so let me let me see what we got here. I'm going to go back to the very beginning of the script. Um, Hang on just a second. Sorry about that, an important text. Um, so uh, the, the main thing about it, this first scene, this first scene has got good material in it, but honestly, it's all over the place. There's too much information. Hi, Di. Um, and so... There is a little sex and chaos in this murder in Mayhunt. That is true. We we are we are a little less um, uh, polished <laughs> than only murders in the building. Um, so uh, let's see. the The thing I want to talk about here is this first scene. I've been essentially avoiding certain questions. Um, and hi, Habrabs. Um, what I'm going to do today is try to say, just get yourself, <laughs> make a damn choice. Uh, this is one of the most important things. Writing is making choices. And this is a scene which I have said over and over again, it's got too much in it. I need to make a choice and figure out which thing is this particular scene about. And I keep going, eh, I'll do it later. I'm going to try and get to that now. It may take the whole hour. Um, okay, uh, when, when do I have them? I have, I've had them very infrequently lately. I have them basically just when I feel like I have time mentally to prepare. What I have to do in order to do one of those is actually prepare a script uh, in a way uh, in which I try and figure out what I want to answer um, and also create some graphics to support that. Um, so I tend to, to put those off, uh, but I will be doing more of them. I will be doing more. Um, no, I love random questions, especially when I'm trying to <laughs> procrastinate on the thing I'm doing. So feel free <laughs> to ask AMA type questions when I'm doing this, because uh, I swear to God, I am I am doing everything I can not to make this choice, even though writing is making choices. And that is what I got to do about this scene. All right. So, um, so let's talk, let me talk to myself a little. You know, when I talk to myself, I go to this document I call notes. Um, all right. And this is just where I talk to myself. And what I do is I just take the date, make a new section with today's date set to today. And then, all right. So let's just talk to ourself, talk to myself here. Um, okay. The opening scene. Which idea is the one? Well, what ideas do you have to choose from? We have to 
describing the experience of poison, we have the first victim. Maybe sh should be the last. We have, okay, the one thing we know we have to have is George vowing to uh, reveal new evidence. Okay, but then we also have, let's take a look here. We also have a lawnmower outside. Um, wait. Okay. So here's the thing. This is where we get to the question of how on the nose we want to be, because um, basically we know we ha must end with George Wilding to reveal that last evidence. Okay, um, so what? Um, and the, fir the first victim, and then we have. George's personal connection to the case scared him as a child. Okay, that's good. Um, let's, let's make that wider. There we go. Um, that click reminds me of hereditary. Uh, which click? The, 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 is, is it on the screen? Um, did I invent? I did, kind of. Um, I, I did. Um, there, there are other versions of that floating around, um, and, and I, I, I heard them. Um, I don't think that they got to the end part, and I don't know. The, the thing about who's it about, what do they want, um, why can't they get it, that trio struck... I, I know I heard that somewhere before. I think... Um, several places. Um, interviews with great writers, they tend to talk about it. Um, however, um, the form of six, and, and honest to God, six, it's not magic. It's not, it's not, you know, some, sometimes you won't use all five, uh, six. You know, it's, it, it's just a tool. The most important thing to remember is that what you are looking for is tools, skills, and process. You are not looking for a checklist of this is what's going to make a movie great because every single one is different. Every show is different. Every uh, The subject of everything is different and the creators of everything are different. So therefore, there is not a formula. What you can learn is tools, skill, and process. So that's what I try to offer. Um, and, and the six essential questions, which I'm thrilled it helped you out. That is great to know, and, and thank you. Um, but the point of it is that it's a tool. There is not a right answer to those. It's not like you can't write till you get it right. The purpose of those questions is when you don't know what to do, try asking them. It's just, it's a thing to do. Um, everyone will answer those questions differently. That's what makes the work different, is that they would answer questions differently. So it's not like you have to get it right. It's just a, a prompt, a trick to, to fool yourself into looking at it in a different way so that you go, oh, right, this is some uh, important thing I have to think about. That's the, the tools. Uh, and that's the six questions. So thank you, Drew P. Very nice to meet you. Okay, Oreno. Uh you once said something isn't working with your story. You ask yourself, "Am I clinging on to something that I may be that may be getting in the way?" Yes, that is definitely something I say. <laughs> in fact, I've been saying it lately about this project. Um, I'm still feeling stuck in my story. Something isn't working, and I can't figure out. Do you have more questions like this? You ask. Me. Yes, I sure do, and this will help you. I made a video about this. Um, and I'm going to make more videos on that very topic of being stuck. 
But right now, the one I would say is this is the one you want to think about. A process of questions. Very, very chock full of things to ask yourself. Um, a process of questions. I list tons of questions um, that I ask myself. Um, I would also say um, you might want to look at, if you are stuck, use what you have. Very, very, very useful, I think, in that, like, I, I don't know, what I, I got something, but I don't know what to do now. Those two, uh, a process of questions and use what you have. I would, I would urge you to look at those. Um, the other thing I would say is when you're really stuck, whatever you're doing, don't keep doing that. Do something different. Um, there is, there is a difference between grinding and inching forward, like rolling slowly forward. If you are grinding, where you're, you're just like, I'm just like stuck here, and the the wheels are spinning in the mud. Um, that's a specific feeling. The the pro the process of I am pushing myself and I am getting a teeny a quarter of an inch a centimeter I'm getting a centimeter at a time. That's okay. That's as long as you are making some progress and you don't feel like you're just wandering, but you're actually just it's hard, but you're pushing forward. That's okay. But if you are grinding uselessly, stop and do something else. Anything else. If you are um, working in the text and you just can't get the text right, stop and go to the outline. Ask yourself some questions. If you are you know, on one section, maybe write a different part of the script. If you can't write another part of the script because you don't have an outline, make an outline. Um, there's so many things you should do if you're feeling like it's something isn't working. The main thing you want to do, though, is when you say something isn't working, and you can't figure out. Well, you got to have some idea. If you're just saying I can't, if you're, if you just say, I feel like this is bad. That's just a feeling. <laughs> that's that's not a problem to solve. That's just a feeling. Therapy and mainly recognizing that, as I have said many times before. Art problems have art solutions. If your problem is actually in the script, the solution will be in the script. If your problem is not in the script, you have to change something in how you're doing your work, um, how you're approaching your work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when you say something isn't working, well, first of all, make a list of everything that is working, and then narrow down what isn't working to a specific problem. You can't solve a problem if it's not specific, if it's not like, this is the problem, this character is inconsistent, that's a problem. Then art problems have art solutions, you can solve that. If, a pro if the problem is, I don't like it, well, think about A, why you don't like it, like, is it too silly, is it too serious, whatever, and then fix that. Art problems have art solutions. And the main thing is, be specific. Um, thank you. Um, and thank you, Maria. Yes, it is very nice when people hit the like button. It's just a nice feeling. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, something is, if you're grinding, do something different. At very worst, uh, and really, this is not the end of the world. It, it can be a problem. Like in my case, I have overdone this. But if you're grinding on something and you're stuck, do something else. Start another project. Set that aside. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Maria is 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 just racking up the gold stars. <laughs> um, leave it entirely and uh, and get get try something else. Only because it's just literally it's like it's like going and taking a shower. You're just like literally uh, rearranging your brain process so that when you come back to it, you will see it differently. Um, but you can't just walk away. From, like if you close the lid of your laptop and sit there and stare at the laptop and say, I need to put this aside for a minute. You're not putting it aside. Putting aside means genuinely working on something else. Uh, it's also nice if you work on other things, because then you begin to get a small pile of things in the works, which means, uh, A, when you get stuck as something, you can go to one of the others, and B, 
as you go along, you have this exciting prospect of other things to do. I know it's hard to keep your heart in um, a project and then put it into something else, but that is the reality of being an artist. The reality of, of being an artist is you're going to do more than one thing. No one project is going to be the one. Or if it is, either you'll know it and you'll organize your life around that, or more likely, you don't have any idea which one of your projects is going to be the best one. And you can't know, and you shouldn't know. If you knew, then you'd just spend spending all your time going, oh, this one isn't the best one. Uh, just work on a little of something else, maybe something very different. If, if you have a... Uh, if you're feeling like you're grinding on a specific thing, like plot, you know, like, oh, I can't come up with a good twist. Um, well, first of all, start to analyze what do you think a twist, a good twist is. Do this. Take art apart. Another good video for helping you to think about it. How do they do that? How does whoever did this thing that I'm doing? Because somebody did what you're doing already, I guarantee you. Um, or at least somebody inspired you. They may be doing a different thing, but their thing inspired you. Look at it. Take it apart. How did that work? Um, but mainly, don't get stuck on one thing if you're stuck on one thing. Now, for me, the problem is literally uh, three times a week, I would come up with, oh, I'll do this one. I got a new one. And I'll start a new project folder and I'll start to make some notes and I'll get into it for a week or so. And then something else will come along or I'll get stuck on something or it'll get hard. And so eventually, I have too many of those. Um, don't have too many. That's my, don't be like me, um, but do have more than one thing going. Um, have I ever, yes, exactly, walked away and never returned to it? Yes, unfortunately, um, after, sometimes after like a year's work, <laughs> I have actually written like rough drafts, full rough drafts of things and then set them aside. Um, and said, I'll come back to this. I'm not liking it. I'm not feeling it. I, or mainly, I often thought, I like this, but I don't think I can sell it, which is foolish. I should have finished those. Uh, but I have, I have unfinished way too many. All right, I'm going to, should I do this? Let me hang on a second. Um, I'm going to, I think, show a terrible truth. Let me see. Work. Uh, green plan. Okay. All right. This is this this list. These are folders of scripts I started and never finished. See how it says screenplays underway? Here, let me see if I can get that away. Yeah. Okay. Screenplays underway. Okay. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And, and this means these are enough underway that I have like full outlines, sometimes full drafts or partial drafts. I mean, I did a lot of work on these, sometimes over the course of years. But that's not all. Okay, that's 25 of those. But then, okay, hold on. I have in this folder, um, then I have this folder of, I have another one, two, three, four, another 10 or 15 what I put in the dead projects file because they're like, I'm not even going to ever work on those again. But then <laughs> here's the thing about being a professional. Uh, it, this is really painful. Hold on. Uh, dead assignment notes. Okay, wait a second. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, folks, get ready. This is going to be brutal. There we go. Okay, you see this list? This is for every project that I was up uh, um, uh, up for uh, like a, auditioning for a job. Like somebody would say to me, 
we have this book that we need adapted, or we have this script that needs a rewrite, or we have this idea for something. Can you do something that's set in this place with this type of person? Okay, so these are assignment notes uh, that I made. So I sometimes spent weeks and weeks coming up with basically a rough outline of each of these projects, but look how many there are. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, and I look at them and I, I feel like, oh, I wish I could have written that, you know, because I didn't. These are all jobs I did not get. OK, <laughs> these are all jobs that I spent weeks auditioning for, preparing for. Um, oh, this one was a good one. Magic 8-Ball. Um, <laughs> uh, the Hasbro company uh, after Transformers, they were like, we need to make all of our toys into to, um, movies. And the company that was in charge of that called me and said, what would you do with Magic 8-Ball? Um, and I actually came up with an idea I loved, which they did not take. But um, which was basically, I don't know if you guys know the, uh, the movie. It's a mad, 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 mad world. It's a giant, uh, many, many people hate this movie, um, but I kind of like it, um, which is it's this big ensemble comedy with tons of cameos. Uh, about a group of different people, a whole bunch of different people who are all trying to find this buried treasure. Um, and it's, so anyway, I was going to do something like that with Magic 8 Ball. Um, anyway, so that's, that is what, <laughs> uh, okay. So, so is it perfectly okay sometimes? Yes. Well, first of all, it's sometimes enforced. As you saw that list uh, you know, I spent a lot of, of time on projects that I wasn't allowed to continue. Um, but certainly I've got those, you know, and by the way, just just to con just to make it even more. Uh, hold on while while we're doing true confessions. So that was just my dead. Um, my dead dead projects um, for, okay, this is, this is another painful one. So this is novels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I have a couple others. These are things that I sometimes kind of fully outlined, in some cases wrote rough drafts of uh, novels. So we're talking about 25, 30 scripts plus uh, almost a dozen novels. Some of them I'm actually still going to consider doing. But so we're talking about, and like uh, working on a novel, and we're talking like a year or more of work, uh, sometimes three or four years, um, especially because some of them are historical novels. One of them was a historical novel um, set during the Second World War about German spies trying to undermine uh, uh, the nuclear project in in. New Mexico in the 1940s, which there were. Um, but anyway, the amount of research, that was like three years of research. Uh, so yeah, is it perfectly okay sometimes? I don't know if it's okay, but I did it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, does that become a scrap pile? No, I don't even, that's not even the scrap pile. The scrap pile is just stuff. I mean, it is, I can cannibalize from it, but the truth is that's not even my uh, skip. Your list makes me feel so much better. Yay, good. Uh, yeah, wow, wow is fact. Yep, not it's it's a an impressive pile. Um, more about your older discarded projects. I I might do that. Yes, I will make a uh, live stream old dead projects. That'll be fun because they're some of them are good ideas. Um, <laughs> Mob taken and privacy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so it's not just us. Yes, um, this is, this is fun actually. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I, I will tell you more. Um, Mob taken was actually it was a really good idea, but it became unfunny. Um, Mob taken was um, was t taken. <laughs> with with uh, a bunch of of this was I did this in the the 90s early 2000s um a, a group of of failing um uh mafia guys in New Jersey 
um, end up um, getting accidentally involved with terrorists. And they basically take on the mission of going to, uh, in this case, it was Paris, going to Paris and hunting down this terrorist cell. So it's these four loser uh, Jersey mob guys, not impressive ones, um, taking on a terrorist cell in, in Paris when none of them speak French and none of them know anything about any culture except their own. Um, so that was fun. And private sector was, was actually really good. Um, I, I will actually to talk about that some other time. It's about a tech company that hires a, uh, that, that is under pressure from a larger tech cor company, a corporate espionage kind of thing. And they hire a um, retired uh, black ops type guy to be their security person and help defend against this. And he becomes, uh, he's, he's nuts. And so basically they, they, they have hired a, a, a murderer who will now kill them if they fire him. So it's, it's a, that's a good story. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes I do. Um, usually if I've done it right, um, the, uh, uh, it's sort of like, there's not that much about the mob guys going to Paris that I can take and put in anything else, which is too bad. There's a lot of good stuff in that. Um, now and then, now and then I will, I will have a, a character or an, uh, something or a scene sequence that I think is, oh, that's cool and I can use it and I will. Um, okay, yeah, 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 I have to do that. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, that's great to know. <laughs> yeah, no, endurance, I got to say, I am stubborn. Um, I'm making a note to do a live stream on the experience of auditioning for for uh, assignments. Um, yes, the Manhattan Project, exactly, uh, in Los Alamos, uh, which apparently is now the subject of a, uh, a, a Christopher Nolan's new movie, Oppenheimer, um, although it'll, it'll probably go beyond the, the just the Manhattan Project. But there was a book called The Making of the Atomic Bomb. I'm sure that's part of what... Um, Nolan's working from too by Richard Rhodes. It's an extraordinary history book. Um, it's one of the most exciting, wonderful. It's like uh, the Power Broker. There are certain history books um, which tell a specific story, but they also spread out to to deal with their entire time. In the case of um, Making the Atomic Bomb, it also gets into fully into nuclear physics, which is really amazing that I could understand it because I don't understand math and science very well at all. But this book was so well written and it's full of marvelous stories and yet at the same time explaining both the governmental process and the military process and the scientific process of making the bomb. It's it's just an unbelievable book. And that's what inspired me to do that story about um, set in the Man Manhattan Project. Um, Yes, I keep them. I've got them. <laughs> I've got them backed up. Um, okay. Uh, started a project with a ton of ideas in my mind. It's dead now. Can't co-write with the other person. So half the characters no longer exist. Uh, this is, oh, good, good. I'm glad that it makes you feel less lonely. That is the problem with collaborating. If you collaborate with someone and you put aside the project or can't make it work, um, and then uh, you can't, or if they do, uh, if either part of the collaboration falls apart, uh, the, the the work that you've done is lost. And that, unless you can get them to agree to say, take it. Um, but mostly that doesn't happen. And that, that, that would make me crazy. That's one of the reasons I don't collaborate too well. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, yes, guys, I will indeed do more live streams, which is just on this topic. I will, I will name them that and, uh, so that we will get more into old broken ideas and unfinished things. And, uh, and yes, what it's like to do a lot of auditions for assignments. Um, okay. So let's get back to this. I'm going to do a little more work on this because I should. The opening scene, which idea is the one, as in... Neo, the Matrix. Okay, well, what ideas do you have to choose from? So here's the thing. We know it must end with this. And we've got these, um, got these three sections. But honestly, if 
this becomes the last, these two flow very well into this if it's the last victim, which means the only thing I'm really having to get to get rid of is the experience of the poison. The problem is that's sort of the juiciest thing. <laughs> that's sort of, it's just like the idea of starting with that description is, um, Very good, Dana. Yes, um, it is freeing to work on your own. It's also really exciting to work with other people. It depends on you and the other person and your abilities to work together. So that's all cool. Um, all right. Uh, so um, what I'm getting at, and this comes to the, the question, this really comes to the question of clinging. Clinging. Uh, which... Uh, I think Rain O maybe asked about before. I'm going back. Yes, clinging. Am I clinging to something? So the question here is, am I clinging to this experience of poison thing because it's, it's just good. It's just like a good thing, but it doesn't serve the rest of the structure. Hmm. Is there a way to go from describing the experience of the poison to the other subjects? That's an interesting question. Okay. Yeah, for instance, this thing, I, where I said, like, it was the first case, um, I could say the killer had used it on 10 other victims in different states. So I could easily, um, Yeah. Or is this is this stuff that could be said while um, Elms is listening to his cold his his podcast. Um, That's a good question. Let me put that in the notes. Hold on. Doop. 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 Okay. So, possible paths. Possible paths are start with poison. Go to cold case end with promise use personal personal connection story when elms is playing back okay so that's possible path one. Possible path two is start with Yeah, no, this is just a bad choice. Last case, cold case. Yeah. 
go to promise. Now with last case, personal connection story, cold case, promise. Okay, and use poison when Elms is playing back. Okay, but of those two, hang on. Um, I just don't see going to uh, using poison when Elms is playing back. It's just, it's just not interesting. Okay, here's the thing about Elms playing back. Elms playing back, what we're going to do is we're going to be meeting a new character. Okay, we'll have left... Yeah, we'll have left... The last thing we'll have seen is uh, that Madeline gets the news in the lobby of her work and says, oh my god, my husband's been killed. Then we cut to crime scene detective. He is listening to the voice of the... A victim. Um, now, here's the thing. It's always possible when you are seeing something and hearing something and they're not the same, that one of them will get, will pass by. You won't, you'll tune it out. That's what I'm afraid of. However, the idea, so like often when you do this, you'll have like, so he's listening to a podcast, but it doesn't really matter what he's was being said. It's just the idea that he's listening to the podcast. But I actually think no. I think that this is not right because there's nothing gained by hearing about the experience of the poison three scenes after we've seen it happen. So that's just not, po that's not a possible path. I thought it was a possible path, but it's not, which means Okay, this is it. This is the path. This is the only path that makes sense. Okay, so therefore, let me go to the outline. Boom. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is, I actually may have made a decision. Can you believe it? Uh, okay. Hi, Larry. Larry's here, and there's been some um, some comments. Do you find that you have a common theme or thread that interests you? Um, that's a that's a, a good question. Um, I, I get asked it a lot. Um, because there's a lot of writing teachers, a lot of good ones, who believe in what they you call a personal thematic. Um, and I just have a problem with thematic because I believe that they that the word thematic and the word theme are basically the same word and just say theme. But <laughs> but but that's so nitpicky. Uh, my point is, there is a theory that artists have a personal. Um, uh, theme or subject matter or approach that shows up in all their work, the auteur theory, essentially. Um, and uh, kind of. Um, I would say that that it's, I mean, one of the things that I like to do is constantly be trying to change and challenge myself. So therefore, part of my theme is Whatever I was doing before, I kind of want to push past it and do something different. Um, so therefore, you know, not to overhype myself, but I would say that I'm kind of, it ideally would be like Picasso in that. Um, Picasso famously, uh, as it's one great critic said, um, he said he's whenever he mastered something, he dropped it and tried something else. Um, he would try drawing, he would do a certain style of painting and then change to a different style, then he would do sculpture, then it, whatever. Uh, I kind of think that's part of my theme. <laughs> um, there are, there are sub-themes. I, I tend to feel very strongly about uh, the value of survival, the value of 
uh, just making it through alive um, counts as triumph. Um, that that the 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 endless struggle between the great and the small, between the everyday life and the big things that stories are about, um, that I tend to come down on the the small, um, even though I like to tell the stories of the big. Uh, the, the 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 small is what matters in the end to me. Those are some things that are themes. But honestly, much of what I try to do is if I have done something, I, I'm working very hard to do something very, very different, usually right next. Okay, that's just way annoying. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Mob taken sounds good. These four Jersey Devils that didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the problem with it is that um, terrorism and uh, vigilantism both became less funny. <laughs> like when I thought of it, it was just when The Sopranos was ending. This is a long time ago, and um, and it was a great idea then. But terrorism is less funny. Uh, because there's a fun action quality to this story, and um, and I I just didn't feel comfortable doing that, um, and uh, and vigilantism didn't seem like like I just didn't know that I wanted to tell a story about how a bunch of guys with guns go and kill a bunch of other guys with guns, and that's the solution to an actual real life problem. Um, I love when that's a solution to some silly problem, but when it's just you know like a I, I, I don't mind violence. I mind when violence is uh, offered as a, a good solution to a real problem. That I feel a little not thrilled uh, about making that the answer. So that was why I stopped doing that one. Um, also, I just thought it was just an old, like, I, it, it seemed historical. By the time I got myself to writing, this is the problem with putting things off. If you do it long enough, the world actually changes to the point where you can't do it. For instance, for 20 years, I was working on a novel um, which played upon a giant tower in a city. I lived in New York at the time. Um, there was a tower, an imaginary tower in an imaginary city that was going to be um, destroyed by terrorists and fall and, and crush uh, a lot of the city. And it's going to be about the, 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 the things that happened to make that happen and then things that happened to to afterwards. And then 9-11 happened and it no longer was this cool fantasy story. It was like, uh-oh, I, I can't write that. So watch out what you do because that's 20 years of work on something. I mean, obviously off and on that I'll, I'll never finish. Um, I buried a manuscript, the manuscript of my first novel in the backyard of my house. Not a tear of a... Really? I would, I would hang on to... I mean, like, I, I think that it's... I, Sometimes we need to do this. I wouldn't say you shouldn't have done it, Gene, but but it might be cool to look at. Can you go back there and dig it up? Um, yeah, I save every as as you can see from these bins, um, and these are just from before digital. <laughs> That's just there's boxes of scripts and boxes of writing from 1980 to 1993. But once things got digital, that's when I got, but the, I've got all these plays and scripts I wrote from behind me, including stuff all the way back to, to high school. Um, okay. Hello, Jenny. Um, so that is where I, I'm just really thrilled. We actually got a plan. Um, I'm just I'm just looking at uh, pages here because I can't believe. Oh, there we go. Boom. Yeah, yeah, I can do this. Now that I've made a plan, I will be able to to go back and do this. Um, so yeah, my overall answer to should you drop projects is. I'm a big proponent of if you get really, really stuck, do something else. However, I am also a great example of what not to do in that a lot of those projects were worth finishing. And I didn't finish them because of emotional, not artistic problems, emotional 
lack of confidence or grass is greener on the next one. And I really regret that those are not finished. Um, I don't mind if it's finished and un like I am going to be showing you guys a lot of scripts I wrote. Because remember, <laughs> those those scripts that I just showed you that I abandoned, that's not part of the list of scripts I wrote and never got made. Okay, I got I got a lot of those. Hold on, let's let's do this if we're doing it. All right, uh, work uh, screenplays. Okay, let's let's do some stuff here. Okay, so. God, stop. There we go. Okay, so um, what I showed you was screenplays underway, okay? Right? That's the ones that are unfinished, and some of them are damn good. However, um, this is the ones that are still working. Like, these were... I was seriously considering writing a lot of these. So this is another two dozen. Um, and then... There's all the ones I did that were actual paid jobs that I actually finished and got, you know, I, I wrote. Uh, these were in addition. And then there's the ones, these are the ones I wrote and finished that were not made, most of them. Yeah, the, I think these are all, these are my original scripts that never got made. Some of them are really good. I don't feel any regret about that. I do not feel any regret about um finishing something and feeling good about it and and now no one know it i mean with a lot of those they got circulated in the business and people said oh that's good i'm not going to make it but it's good um you want to talk about this other job or something like that um but i don't feel bad about any of those i feel bad about the ones i didn't write so that is something to take into account um Yes, indeed. It was good work. It wasn't a lot of work, but sometimes that's important to remember. Small steps count. Uh, if you just get that one scene, that one choice made, then tomorrow I have something to do. Uh, so greetings to Mexico, the good content. It is nice. It, the good content, that is that is something that we all should strive to have. Uh, greetings also from Mexico. Uh, hello, Paloma. I hope you guys are all doing well. A couple of years ago, Matt started writing a sort of vampire origin story about someone with a blood disorder that became a doctor to cure himself, intervaling, turning himself into a vampire. <laughs> and then the Morbius trailer dropped. Yep. Yep. It's almost the exact same idea. If it makes you feel any better, the Morbius comics apparently had been along, around for a long time. So you probably were doing yours after that without even knowing it. And by the way, that's okay. People, I mean, honestly... If you had a passionate vision of how to do Doctor Becomes Vampire, um, uh, you probably could have done it despite Morbius, certainly despite the comics, because nobody knew about them. There's books out there with all sorts of stories that nobody knows about that you'll be copying without even knowing they exist. That happens all the time. Don't worry about it. The point is to make your thing so distinctly yours. Make it what you feel like. Use your instinct, which is another video I strongly suggest you uh, watch. Um, and then, honestly, most, it's just, there aren't that many ideas. There aren't. It's not about that. It's about, it's about how do you make it special in its own way speaking in about its own way. Um, that's really what counts. Honestly, I mean, you know, the famous complaint of, oh, all rom-coms are alike and all Marvel movies are alike and all comic book stories are alike and all war stories are alike. Yes, that's true. There, <laughs> you, you, you will not be able to write something most of the time totally original. You can't. Don't worry about it. That's not the goal. That's not the point. The point is to do what you do um, with what you're using. And you're always using something. I'm just making notes uh, on so I can put the description. So yeah, that's my, that's my take on it. Um, uh, currently writing several stories based on Mexican folklore and culture. Uh, 
That is great. Well, just keep working on it. The main thing to do is keep doing it. This is the thing. Do the work uh, as best you can. Finish it, which is the thing we were talking about, is, is it okay to not finish things? It's okay, but do remember, some of it, it's better to fin. You'll learn more from finishing it, even if it's bad, than you will by saying, oh, this is going to be bad and giving up. You will learn more from making it as good as you can, and you never know what you can do with it if you finish it. If you can't finish it, you can't do anything. So, um, yes. Uh, also, the other good thing about for you, Matt, is nobody liked Morbius. <laughs> you know, Morbius was was famously mocked and and uh, un, not successful. So, therefore, there's room in that space, <laughs> as people say. Um, other people have the same ideas as yours. It's just a matter of, no, not at all about who realizes it first. It's 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 partly for I mean first in the business kinda, but honestly, um, sometimes what'll happen is you'll say they'll say okay what can we do to make this different because we want to pursue it but they are in that territory and honestly often they will just say okay we're gonna have three vampire comedies or we're gonna have four stories of shipwreck victims and they'll just do it um, yeah. Yeah, it does. Exactly. It means you're a cool, brilliant part of the universe. It does mean sometimes your stuff doesn't get made. That doesn't matter that much. As you can see, I had a really satisfying professional career for 25 years, and I was most of what I wrote was never bought. Never. Those are great scripts I wrote. They're really good <laughs> and uh, certainly good enough. I mean, honestly, the bar is pretty low a lot of the time. Uh, it just didn't work out for very, very, very many reasons. That's part of the game. Okay. Um, what would you do today if you didn't have the connections and money you have now? Well, right now I don't have any connections. I'm retired, and I could not. I could not get a script made uh, if I at all. No matter what, there's no way. Uh, so, which path would you take to make it without dying? Poor and unknown. Well, poor and unknown can happen to the best of us. However, what path would I take? I would take the path of making whatever you can make right now by yourself. Keep doing the work. Obviously, try and learn about the business. Try and do stuff that steers towards the business. But don't spend all your time trying to get the business's attention and permission and approval. Do work that you can do and get done and put out by yourself, even if it's small. It's better to run a little theater company and do plays or make little web movies and just keep doing it and learning and getting better every time and building up your resume, building up your skill set. That's what I would say. The worst thing you can do is spend all your time trying to figure out what the business wants and trying to be what they want. Yes, you should take that into account, but the main thing you should do is say, what am I? What can I do? What do I like? And do that. That would be my path, which I mostly took that path. That's how I got the jobs I got. Please do remember, um, I, I have, <laughs> I don't know about connections now, but um, for 15, 18 years. Okay, I started seriously trying to be a professional writer, and it took me 18 years of being poor and unknown, not dead, but poor and unknown, before I even began to make a little bit of money and have some connections. Actually, I had connections for 10 years of that 18 years, and I still couldn't get any money. So it, it's, a long, it's a long run. Yes, exactly. Tolkien did not invent all that stuff he used in The Lord of the Rings. He was a, a, myth, a mythologist. He was a folklorist. He, he, he took stuff and made his own version of it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, exactly, exactly. Creators of everything, everywhere, all at once, which I have recommended repeatedly, guys. You should see it. It's amazing. Um, and it still ended up being such a fresh take on it that it was well-liked, even though it was admittedly same old, same old in many ways. Okay, picked it back up over the few, unmorbiusing it. <laughs> you know, also the cool thing is just, yeah, exactly, unmorbius it and just like, what kind of doctor is he? What What's different? Morbius wasn't very good. So in fact, watch Morbius and don't do what it did. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Oh, you're the one. You're the one who got him to stop. 
Uh, it's more of in time. All right. Um, okay, let's 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 wrap this up soon. But I felt discouraged a few days ago when the brothers who created Stranger Things announced that they were working on a Death Note series. Um, you know, well, first of all, do not. This is one thing I will say. Do not. I don't know what they're doing. Do not use other people's copyrighted material. You can write the same type of thing, but um, but don't don't ever say, "Oh, I'm going to do a Spider-Man thing." Maria obviously will argue against that, uh, but Maria is doing it in such a way, knowing that you can't do anything with her Star Wars project. However, I will say in general find the original version of the thing you love in somebody else's. I'm getting the sense that good content is saying working on something similar to Death Note, but not actually Death Note. And if it's similar, then just find your way to make it yours and keep doing it. That's my idea. <laughs> uh, thank you, Javier. Yeah, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk more. OK, my phone is adaptable. I'll catch the answer later. What are your thoughts about adapting something from another country? Do it. I mean, do it. Uh, the legal issues remain um, the same, which is you may not adapt something that you do not have. the. If it's a copyrighted piece of work and you adapt it, you don't have the right to do that. So don't do that. Um, if you want to take some mythology or folklore or, or non-copyrighted material and adapt it, great. Otherwise, you need a legal contract allowing you to do an adaptation. Um, I first started wanting to make movies, then thought of creating short films. Yes, com into comic content and perhaps animated. Yes, do all of that. That is all great. My answer is yes, do that stuff. Do whatever you can do. Um, I got to make a card. The do what you can as who you are with what you have right now. That's my big mantra. Do what you can as who you are with what you have right now. And if you keep doing that, what you have and who you are will just continually change and could grow. But the main thing is just keep doing stuff. So that is uh, where I'm going to end because you can't get better than a mantra. OK, uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Go write something.